Hey guys, welcome back to Econ Class. Today we're going to be going over an FRQ from the 2003 AP Micro exam. This is the B version of the test, and this is the number two question. The question is broken down into three parts. The first is asking you for domestic values, consumer and surplus under a domestic market. Then part B, we add in free trade or the open economy. And then in part C, we add in a tariff. All right, the question gives us a diagram that illustrates the domestic market for wheat in country X before and after international trade. So the letters inside the diagram are gonna indicate different areas, not points on the, on the graph, but areas within the graph. Using the labeling of the graph, identify each of the following before any trade occurs. So we're looking at a domestic market here. So the only two curves that really matter at this point are the demand curve and the domestic supply curve. We wanna find equilibrium price and quantity. We find our equilibrium. P1 is going to be our equilibrium price and Q3 is gonna be our equilibrium quantity. Now the area of consumer surplus, everything above the price but below the demand curve, H. Consumer surplus is simply area H. Now everything below the price but above the supply curve is our producer surplus, I, L, and T. All right, so part B has us looking at implementing trade and then identifying the amount of grain that we import into the country. All right, we have a price at PW, below equilibrium or domestic equilibrium, so we're definitely gonna be importing the good. So in this, we gotta figure out where our equilibrium is. We got our demand curve, still domestic demand, and now we have our world supply curve. All right, we have our upward sloping part, which indicates our domestic supply, and then the perfectly elastic part of the curve is the rest of what we're getting from the world. It's at the world price. We can get as much as we want to at that price. So there's our supply curve. So Q5 is our equilibrium. This indicates the quantity demanded. Consumers are willing to buy Q5 amount of grain at PW, price of the world. Our, our domestic production is going to be Q1. This is the amount that we are willing to produce. After that, we accept the world price and no more producers are willing to produce. All the marginal sellers left the market because price is too low. So domestic production will occur until Q1, but domestic demand at the price of the world is at Q5. So Q5 minus Q1, that's the way that we're gonna label this. Q5 minus Q1 is the amount of grain imported. Now part C has us implementing a tariff. So we're gonna start off where we left off with part B and then continue on from there because it's having us look at the change. It wants to know what's gonna change with domestic production, domestic consumption, consumer surplus, and producer surplus from going from free trade to adding the tariff. So we have a new price on the, on the model here and this is going to be PT, the price with the tariff. So with trade, with no tariff, our domestic production is gonna be at Q1. We established this in part B. We know that we are gonna produce up until Q1 at that point, all the marginal sellers are gonna leave, the domestic marginal sellers, because the price of the world takes over. We can get as much as we want to at PW. Now domestic consumption occurs up until Q5. That's because the demand curve and the supply of the world curve intersect at Q5. Consumers are willing to buy that amount at the price that the world is offering. Now consumer surplus, everything above the price, but below the demand curve. That's gonna be H, I, J, K, L, M, N, and R, S. That total area represents our consumer surplus. Now producer surplus, everything below the price, but above the supply curve, domestic supply curve, is T, that's it. That little area right there represents all the producer surplus that is gained domestically from this market. So T. Now, we're gonna add the tariff in. The tariff is at PT, price t with the tariff, and because price goes up, our supply curve extends, domestic production increases, and the world price with the tariff is higher than what the world price was before. So we've increased domestic production, and because price is higher, we're gonna reduce the amount, the quantity demanded as well. So our new domestic production is now up to quantity two, because of that higher price that the tariff provided. And our new domestic consumption, because we're at a higher price as well, is gonna be a little bit lower at Q4, quantity four. 
Now consumer surplus is going to change as well because price is higher. Everything above the tariff price, PT, H, I, J, K, we've lost L, M, N, R, and S. That's no longer part of consumer surplus. So H, I, J, and K are the only parts of consumer surplus. Now, we're going to take care of producer surplus in just a second, but I want to identify these other areas. N and R, this is going to be our tax revenue. The amount imported times the amount of the tariff right there. M and S, this is our dead weight loss. It's the surplus loss to that tariff. Now, L, this is our new addition onto producer surplus. Because price went up a little bit and our, we have marginal sellers joining the market again, we have a little bit more producer surplus right there. So L, T, and L represent all of our producer surplus. Now, the questions, and this is an important part of this, don't ask what the new values are. They ask what the change was. That's why I did this whole table, just to kind of help you understand it. So when we look at part, CI, domestic production, it's Q2 minus Q1. That's the amount that we added on, the distance between Q2 and Q1. Uh, for domestic consumption, how much did it change by? Q5 minus Q4. The distance between the two is what it decreased by. Now, consumer surplus, we had a loss of L, M, N, R, and S. And then producer surplus, we had that gain of L. So remember, pay attention to the wording in these questions. It's the change that they're looking for, not the new value. So we looked at the old value, we looked at the new value, and we found the change for each one of these. All right, guys, hopefully you understood all of that. If you didn't, check out the previous video that I made on trade, public policy, and deadweight loss. It explains the graphs and goes over in detail all the ins and outs of those particular models. All right, guys, as usual, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.